<clears throat> All right. So um, today I want to uh, describe for you the. Um, so I, I, I will finish with uh, um, analysis of infrared divergences, and I want to describe to you the uh, kinoshita lee nauenberg theorem, or KLN, that says that uh, there are no um, infrared divergences in physical um, transition probabilities in general in quantum mechanics. And um, we will, at the end, we will also uh, see a connection between uh, factorization and evolution. All right, so the KLN theorem. As I said, it is about the infrared finiteness of trans transition probabilities in the case that we sum over initial and final states. Um, and here, in particular, that will mean uh, that we, we sum over states that have uh, infrared divergences through having soft photons, for instance. Um, so the theorem is uh, due to Kinoshita in 62 and in the independently T.D. Lee and Naunberg in 64. This is a more general theorem than the specific cases that we were uh, analyzing, which were infrared divergences in, uh, uh, in uh, loops and in uh, emission of uh, soft particles, soft and collinear particles in uh, QED and QCD amplitudes. So this is more general for in quantum in any quantum mechanical system. So um, to prove it, we consider quantum mechanics in the interaction picture, in which um, states, both states and um, uh, and operators evolve in time, but states evolve in time with the interacting uh, part of the Hamiltonian, specifically the interacting part in the interacting picture. And that means being in the uh, interacting picture, excuse me, somebody wanted to get in to the meeting. <clears throat> um, so being in, in the interacting picture means I uh, multiply to the left with uh, e to the i uh, h0 t and to the right with e to the minus i h0 t, h0 being the free Hamiltonian. Um, so, so yeah, so h is the free Hamiltonian h0 plus the interacting part uh, hi. And as a result of this, um, uh, of this uh, evolution equation, integrating it, we get that uh, the evolution in time of the state is with the evolution operator u of t t prime, so from t prime to t, which is the time order exponential of minus i times the integral from t to t prime of this uh, um, interaction Hamiltonian in the interacting picture. And then the S matrix elements are uh, this evolu uh, correspond to this evolution. Uh, so the S matrix uh, is the, are the matrix elements, so in, in between an initial and final state of this evolution operator um, but from minus infinity to plus infinity. And uh, I can rewrite, you know, I can make evolution in steps, so I can evolve from minus infinity to zero and from zero to plus infinity. And also, you know, if we take the dagger, we reverse the order of the evolution. 
So I can write this evolution, so u from uh, evolution from minus infinity to the zero, and then u star or u dagger uh, from plus infinity to zero. So the pro transition probability that we're interested in, and we'll sum over, transition probability between a state A and state B is, uh, so the amplitude, as we said, is the matrix element of this. So it's between uh, bra B and ket A. And then the probability means modulus square of that. And I want to rewrite it since we split S into this u dagger 0 plus infinity and u minus infinity. I want to uh, split this into a sum over states i and j of some matrix elements that I'll call, so to the right I'll call r minus a i j, and uh, to the left r, r plus b i j uh, complex conjugate. So then the definition of L plus minus AIJ is according to this uh, splitting of S into U dagger plus infinity, uh, U dagger zero plus infinity and U zero minus infinity. Um, R plus minus is our matrix element of this. So I matrix element of U zero plus minus infinity between I and a and complex conjugate and um, uh, a uh, u a uh, zero plus or minus infinity uh, between bra j and uh, ket a. Now the complex conjugate of the first means I reverse. Uh, I reverse the order of matrix elements. So it's now between A and I. And I also have the dagger of U. So, so this becomes this. And this is just this identically. <clears throat> so I can write it in two different ways. Um, <clears throat> and now I substitute these formulas for R plus A, um, R plus AIJ into this transition probability. Um, yeah, here it's missing the sum over I and the J. Sum over I and J. <clears throat> uh, so the transition probability is sum over i and j, and then I replaced r plus b i j, and then the complex conjugate of that, which means uh, reversing the order of um, the Brian Ket and uh, using dagger inside the, the matrix element. So I write it like this. So now you see <clears throat> I have in the middle here uh, ket bra a a, then ket bra i i, and ket bra b b. So I, I could write it like this, or otherwise I could put this here, and then I will have uh, ket bra jj. But first of all, let's um, let's consider perturbation theory to start with. So let's um, let's keep only the first order. I mean, so part of so we're trying to prove a theorem, and the way we will do it is we will uh, prove it to first order and then by induction we'll show that if we we'll show that if 
the theory uh, if the statement is true at uh, order n then it's also true at order n plus one and so having the initial uh, order one uh, true uh, means that proof to all the orders <clears throat> All right, so first order. We expand to first order this element uh, between i and j, uh, between bra i and cap j of u zero plus minus infinity. So to zero third, of course, u is one, and then I have the uh, product of i and j. Then uh, to second order, uh, to, to first order, excuse me, I just have from instead of the exponent, so the exponent is one plus the argument to first order. Basically, that's the point. So the to the first order, we have uh, the uh, the argument of exponent between bra i and ket j. So we have minus i j integral over time between zero and plus and minus infinity of this. Uh, matrix element of the uh, interacting Hamiltonian in the interacting picture. So the interacting Hamiltonian hi with e to the i h0 t and e to the minus i h0 t to the right. But now I can make use of this e to the i h0 t uh, and i and j are um, I should have said, I guess, that, um, well, since we are in the in interacting picture, i and j are states, eigenstates of H0. Um, so H0i is the energy Ei times i. So that means I can act with H0 to the left and therefore replace a zero with the energy EI. And I can also uh, act to the right in this exponent uh, with a zero on J and replace it with EJ. So therefore, I, ge I uh, get rid of, um, I get rid of uh, these exponents and uh, exponents of operators and now I have the normal exponent e to the i e i minus e j t double prime and then I'm left with uh, the Schrodinger inter Schrodinger picture uh, interacting Hamiltonian between the Schrodinger picture states i and j so the h i element uh, i j this definition so this is some matrix element. So I always multiply with the coupling G, G uh, just to, so I pull out the coupling G out of the interacting uh, Hamiltonian just to keep, uh, uh, keep track of uh, the order of uh, expansion that we're in. All right, and, and then this, uh, integral over t double is, is uh, trivial. Is just so it's integral of an exponent. So it's the exponent itself, um, but between uh, so the exponent itself divided by this coefficient, which is um, i times e to the minus i uh, i times e i minus e j. And then upstairs I have i g, so the i cancels, and then I'm left with g uh, matrix element divided by e i minus e j. But not quite, it's this exponent, so upstairs I still have this exponent between uh, plus, and e, uh, plus and minus infinity and zero. Well, at zero the exponent is one, and that's what we get here. But um, we want to cancel the um, exponent at um, plus and minus infinity. So to do that, we use the 
standard regularization with plus and minus i epsilon, right? Such that, so in here, I, I would put e to the i, min, e, I, e i minus i j plus and minus i epsilon. But this is multiplied with plus and minus infinity. So then we have this factor i times plus minus i epsilon, which is minus plus epsilon times plus minus epsilon. That's so plus minus infinity. That's minus infinity. I have e minus infinity, which is zero. All right, so the, the boundary value at plus minus infinity cancels and we're left with boundary value at zero. So we get this result. All right. Uh, so, so this is the, this one mm, matrix element. But we want to calculate this r plus i plus minus a i j, which is um, this. Uh, let me put it like this. So is is this element that we've uh, calculated u plus zero plus or minus infinity between two states times uh, u dagger zero plus or minus infinity between some states. So um, is this times something like dagger of this? So when we expand in G, I get so I get the product of zeroth orders, which is delta I A delta G A. Then the first order of one, which is this uh, minus H uh, minus G H G A over A, A, E G minus E A plus or minus epsilon. This comes because I have this term. So this is the natural term between G, J and A. So I have E G A J minus E A. And then this uh, U dagger, which gives then this other term of first order, G H star. Now this is between, um, so this is the dagger of this element. So the dagger, so this is the dagger of the element between I and A. So I have divided by E I minus E A. But now it's it's complex conjugate, so it's minus plus I, I epsilon. All right, so this is the R plus minus to first order to G uh, G uh, to order G. And then there are corrections toward the g squared and more, which we'll analyze further. All right, so uh, so now we see what what um, what means to have infrared divergence. Infrared divergence means so when is this thing div divergent? This first order of object when uh, e a is equal to e i or e j. Right, and now we go back to what we're looking at. We look at a probability to go between state A and state B. So state A is an external state. And then we roll this as a sum over I and J, and then these J, J are internal states, right? States that appear uh, in I mean, virtual states would come to a state that that we we sum over in loops. That's the interpretation in terms of quantum field theory. But yeah, they're virtual states, states that we are summed over, not external states. Um, so uh, so the uh, divergence comes from. Uh, external state being equal to some internal state. Um, so between real and virtual states. And so that that's, for instance, being an electron, an external electron. 
and then the extern internal ele electron line diverging, so splitting into a photon, but then the photon would be uh, soft. So that would give us a soft divergence, right? <clears throat> I mean, yeah, I mean, we could discuss, uh, we could interpret this also in terms of collinear divergences, but uh, yeah, we need to think how to formulate this uh, better. But anyway, the point is, this is indeed an infrared divergence in R plus minus AIJ. And uh, the, part, the point is that the uh, divergence will be eliminated when we sum over I and J, over the internal states I and J. <clears throat> so let's consider the domain of states with energy E, D of E, so the set of all states with energy E. Um, so, so if the energy is constant, then we want some, we want actually to, so the, the, the thing that we want to prove is that the sum with, uh, over A being in D of E and B being in D of E, of this transition probably A to B. Why? Well, A and B are external states. But external states that have the same uh, energy E. So that means that. Um, so what does it mean to be to sum over states of the given energy? Well, it means what we um, what we were. Um, discussing when we we're canceling infrared divergences. We are canceling the infrared divergence uh, in the loop, so in, um, in the internal states I and J. Um, so uh, the divergence where EI was equal to EA, so um, there were some soft particle being em emit going into a loop. So, meaning that EA was equal to e, EI plus some E gamma that is equal to zero. Uh, with the, the infrared divergences over emission of soft particles. In other words, uh, changing the state of having, instead of having a state of an electron, having a state of an electron plus a photon, but that doesn't change the energy, so the energy of the photon would be zero, right? So that's that's what we're we're proving now. So we're proving that summing over these external states of given energy. So in other words, summing over all possible soft emissions of photons. Uh, this thing that otherwise has divergences in terms of uh, internal states equal to external states, meaning in divergences where there are soft uh, photons going into the loops, with uh, cancelling that with the uh, divergences in the emission of external soft uh, photons. All right. So, uh, the fact that um, this sum over A, sum over B, uh, um, modulus squared of amplitude S between A and B uh, squared is uh, infrared finite, is equivalent now with uh, the statement about um, the object Rij plus minus of E, which is sum over A in domain of E of R plus minus AIJ is infrared divergent. 
In other words, I've, um, the, the probability is a modulus squared with sum of a and sum of b, and that uh, factorizes, right? So I have, this is equal to, so in here, um, oh, I, sorry, I write it here, right? So uh, amplitude, uh, sorry, the probability between A and B is sum over ij of this r plus minus star and r minus this here with B here with A. Now I sum over A and B means I have here sum over B of RB, then sum over A of RA. Right? And then there's also a sum over I and J. But uh, turns out that uh, so it's enough to to show um, uh, to show for a given i and j that uh, this sum of uh, a of r plus minus a i j has no infrared divergences. All right. So to for, to this first order, we have obtained that uh, this matrix element was this, and then r plus minus was this. So the first order, our proof is, um, in some sense, trivial. It's just case by case. So let's consider that neither i nor j is in the domain of E, right? Then that means this delta i a delta j a is zero. Uh, and um, and also here, delta j is zero, and here delta i a is zero. So all of these ele elements, r plus minus a i j, uh, is zero. R plus, r plus minus, uh, yeah, so it's r plus minus a, uh, a i j, so therefore also the sum over a of the same is uh, zero. Now, let's consider that J is part of the domain of E and I is not part of this. That in particular means that um, uh, that I, so I is not part, G is part, so so E G is equal to E. So that but that means that E I minus E is different from zero. So we replace this. So uh, uh, so. So, uh, because of this, that also means delta i uh, delta i a of excuse me uh, there's a horrible sound here on some work so I'll uh, well mm. well it stopped well let me continue if it doesn't stop I'll move uh, to a different spot but um so I was saying, uh, if uh, so, so in this case, delta i a is zero, 
So this term is zero and this term is zero and we're left with this term, delta j. And that is j is one. And here I have ei mi minus e. So we get this result. But this is um, finite because, as I said, EI minus E is non-zero. So this is infrared, um, uh, infrared uh, uh, fr uh, free, yeah. um, infrared safe, sorry. Um, and then the same thing if I exchange I and J. Now EG minus E is non-zero and I have delta um, delta IA is equal to uh, one, but delta G, uh, G um, A is uh, zero. So I am left with the other term. This, which has now in the denominator EG minus E, but this is non-zero, so this is again finite. And finally, uh, if both i and j are in the domain d e, then um, then I get uh, so that uh, delta i a is one and delta j a is one. Um, Therefore, I get um, um, I get delta i j, and um, and then here this is one, this is one, and um, and then I get uh, um. Uh, sorry. Um, sorry, what? Uh, I'm confused now. I forgot the argument. Uh, so delta. So if both i and j are in the domain, so I have delta i a is one and delta j a is one. Um, and then EI is equal to uh, uh, EA and EJ J is equal to EA. Um, uh, Oh, sorry, yes, yes, so, so yes. So this is, but now I have the I epsilon. So now I have, um, I have here plus minus this thing, plus minus G H star. And then my, and then here I have minus plus G H. But so this, so here I get uh, the I get something minus the complex conjugate of the same thing. So that's the imaginary part, but this the Hamiltonian is real, so this is zero. Yeah. Okay, so that's why this is finite. All right. So now let's prove this to all orders. Um, as we said, we'll, we'll pr proceed by induction. We've already proved it at first order. And, um, and now I need to prove that, uh, that uh, by if, the, the, if we have uh, infrared uh, safety at order uh, n, then we will have it at order n plus 1. And we've reduced infrared safe, safety to the statement about R, about this R plus minus IJ of E. So uh, this, if this is true,
Um, yeah. So if this is true at order n, then it should be true at order n plus one. Or reversely, it is true as order n minus, or, or if it's true of order n minus one, it should be true at order n. All right, so um, we start by diagonalizing the Hamiltonian um, by using this evolution operator u0 plus or minus h. So the, the, the full Hamiltonian Um, the full Hamiltonian is now in between the, the evolution operator, mind you, is with uh, um, uh, is uh, time order exponential of the integral of this. Uh, this um, interaction part in the interaction picture in the interacting picture. So then, um, you can figure out by expanding this that uh, that uh, this evolution operator will um, will uh, diagonalize H. Now another way of thinking about it is that. Um, um, we're um, we're reducing the time evolution to an evolu to to just something defined at time equal to zero, and so if the time is the same, then this is, should be a diagonal, right? So u dagger here takes us from from bra minus infinity to to uh, cat zero, and then u takes us from cat uh, plus infinity to bra zero. So this h now is indeed diagonal. It's between state zero and zero at uh, state at time equal zero and time equal zero. But uh, but u has a comp complicated its structure so it's um, it's time or the exponential of something so uh, so it, so while this object is now diagonal it's not exactly h0 it's um, something that we'll call h0 hat it's diagonal like uh, a zero but it's uh, it's not uh, uh, it's not H0. It's different from H0. So then let's uh, look at the commutator of U with this H0 hat. So that is to say U H0 hat minus, minus H0 hat U. Um, well, H0 hat is diagonal, so it doesn't matter. I mean, it commutes, right? Um, so, sorry, uh, no, so I, uh, sorry, um, I, um, I rewrite, uh, so I rewrite, um, let's see, uh, so if I multiply this with u to the left, so I have u h0 hat is equal to, to uh, h uh, u, right? So now I have, and then this remains the same. So then I have h u minus h zero hat u. In other words, <clears throat> I have, um, and then replacing h as h zero plus h uh, interaction. So I, I keep this h interaction, and then. The remaining part, it's the difference between a zero and a zero hat that I'll call delta. So the commutator of u with a zero hat is this interacting part. 
and this delta, the difference between the free Hamiltonian and this diagonalized um, full Hamiltonian H hat, A0 hat. All right, now we expand everything in perturbation theory. And remember, that's why I, I pulled out a G outside of the interacting uh, Hamiltonian, just to keep uh, track of orders of G. So I expanding in perturbation theory means uh, writing this as sum over N of G to the N times the um, nth order object. So delta N here, U N here, and R N here. Um, so, uh, so remember the statement uh, that we wanted to prove is infrared free. So the way we we reduced the statement of um, probabilities summed over external state being infrared divergence, the uh, infrared free. Um, we reduce that to the statement that r plus minus i i j of e, so the sum over a in the domain of e of r plus minus a i j, so that thing is uh, infrared safe, free of infrared divergences. Now, so this is now expanded in um, in uh, perturbation theory and orders of g. But this R plus minus AIJ was a sum itself over matrix elements of U. And I expand those, I, I expanded those in, uh, so I expanded U in orders of G, then its matrix element also in orders of G. So here I have U expanded uh, to order R and here I have U expanded to order S. So the total order is now G to the power R plus S. And I call this R plus S, I call it N. And then this then becomes a sum over N of G to the N R plus minus N I, N I J uh, of E. Where this is by definition, so now remember R plus S was equal to N, but so I had sum over R and S, one of them uh, becomes sum over N and the other, and we're left with a sum over one of them. So let's, get, let's say R, so here we have U R, but then S is N minus R, okay. All right, so we've, reduced to uh, then, so in perturbation theory, we reduced to the statement that R, so if um, the statement uh, that we will call a lemma, that um, um, if in the induction steps, in other words, so if R plus minus R n i j of E is free from infrared divergences up to order uh, capital N. So for all the all this n from one to capital N, then R plus minus n i j is also infrared free up to order uh, capital N plus one. And the proof of this lemma of this induction step is also case by case. <clears throat> Let's consider now first the case that um, I is not in the domain of E and uh, G is. So then let's consider the, the commutator that we've uh, defined here, calculated here, the commutator of U, the evolution operator with A0 hat, but now between states I and A. And according to 
this calculation. Now, uh, between state i and state j, uh, sorry, between state i and state a, is g h i plus delta times u in between states i and a. Um, <clears throat> and now let's consider the energies of this totally uh, the, of this total uh, Hamiltonian, which total uh, of the diagonalization of the total Hamiltonian a zero i. So this is diagonal. That means h zero uh, hat. So it's diagonal in the same basis. I mean that was that that was meant by uh, diagonalizing it. So this relation was meant that we diagonalize h, but we don't change the states. So i and j are still the same. So um, h zero hat times i now is equal to must be proportional to i, and the the eigenvalue is called EI. Um, so, so, so then this is now U A zero hat minus A zero hat uh, U. But then I can, I can act with A zero hat. So in the f in the first term, I can act on the right on A. I get E A, and in the second, second I get um, uh, I on, on, I act on the left. So the second term is A zero hat U. So I act on the left, and I get E, e I. But this term has a minus, so I get uh, E I E A minus E I times. Then I'm left with the matrix element of u in between i and a, so times u i a is equal to. Um, now I uh, now I introduce a complete set. This set, this set. I uh, I insert it here. Right. So then I have matrix elements of G H I plus delta between I and K and matrix element of U between K and A and also all is summed over K. Okay, so I get this. Um, here should be some, it's implicit, it's sum over K. Um, and in the second term, um, delta is al already uh, diagonal because delta is A0, which is diagonal in the basis E and gives energy E0, uh, E0i. And then um, A0 hat is also diagonal in the same basis I. So uh, delta is diagonal in this basis. Um, so I get, um, so I, I define this, um, uh, this eigen energy of delta, I, in, so delta between I and I, I call it delta I. Um, and then again, I'm left with uh, u between i and a, so u i a. So I get this uh, uh, equation. Now a belongs to the domain of e, but i doesn't belong to the domain of e, which means, as before, that e i min uh, minus e a is non-zero. So we can divide by it. I can divide this equation by it, and then I get u i a um, u i a is equal to this divided by e a minus e i, 
And then, moreover, I expand in orders of g. Uh, and then at rth order, I get that u r i a is equal to 1 over e a minus e i. Uh, this thing to rth order. Um, so now this the interacting Hamiltonian had the g in front. So uh, I'm left with u at order r minus 1. And then here I have, I, as before, I have two powers. So I call, expand, I call the expansion of the power of the expansion of delta, I call it s. And then in the u, I'm left with r minus s. OK, so now I, I found. Uh, so, so now that we had um, r plus rn plus minus ij was sum over a r sum over a in the domain of a e of this u r i a complex conjugate and u n minus r j a. Um, so this relation. So now I, I can substitute um, the matrix element uh, of u inside. Um, uh, sorry, I, I I do I expand just the matrix the. Uh, the expansion of U R I A complex conjugate. So I, I complex conjugate this relation. I substitute here, and I'm left with U N minus R J A to the right. And uh, and now, now you see, now I can reform it. So I I, I have this relation, but this relation is valid for all n. So in particular, I can rewrite this for n mi minus 1. In this case, I have here u n minus 1 minus r. Um, so I can expand, uh, so, so I can reform, excuse me. Um, Well, yeah, and and I can re, uh, redo the sum as well. The sum over um, instead of r, I'll use r minus one. So I I can re rewrite this r n minus one as sum over r u r minus one star, and then here I will get u n minus r. Um, so, uh, so, so then I can, um, so, so once I have, once I have, uh, this relation now I can reform R n minus one plus minus I J, right? So R n minus plus n minus 1 plus uh, uh, k, uh, r plus minus n minus 1 k, kj uh, will be this, which is here. But then here, I have um, Um, I have u star r minus one i a. Uh, sorry, k k a, because here now I have k j. Right, I want to form k j. So in this first term, and then in the second term. Um, 
in the second term, I reform um, R plus minus N minus S from the same logic instead of I have the same kind of term in, in just instead of uh, R minus one, here I have N minus S. Instead of this R minus one, here I have R minus S. So, um, <clears throat> so I form the same R minus one. Says. Okay, so in this way, I've um, I've used the sum over a. This is gone. But, yeah. Um, and uh, also the sum over r. But we're still left with this sum this in the first term and this sum in the second term. Right? So I'm, I'm left with sum over k here and sum over s here. So in other words, I've written the in induction step in the following way. I've written r plus minus n i j in terms of r plus minus n minus 1 k j and r plus minus n minus s i j, but where s goes from 1 to n minus 1. In other words, uh, this is the in induction step that we talked about for this particular case, for the case where i is in d of e, but g is not. So we've assumed uh, the, the uh, absence of infrared divergence, diver divergences in uh, up to order n minus one. So in all of these orders and in this order, and we've obtained that also the same is true at order uh, n because all of these things are finite. So R plus, R was finite by the induction uh, step, R H plus, uh, H interaction is finite and delta is finite. And moreover, um, um, I is not in the domain of E, so this thing is non-zero. All right. Uh, now, of course, also the opposite case with G uh, not in the domain of E, but I being in the domain of E is uh, is also true. Uh, now, oh, the only thing that changes is uh, uh, you get the complex conjugation because this I J corresponds to uh, so um, we have J here, but here I with a complex conjugation. So. Uh, So yeah, um, so we have um, basically what we obtain is R plus minus N I J star, which is equal to R plus minus N J I E by this complex conjugation. All right, uh, finally, we get the state where both i and j are in the domain of E. In this case, um, we cannot use the same uh, logic, so we have to do something different. Then, what do we do? We do we use unitarity of quantum mechanics, which says that u u dagger must be equal to one. The time evolution operator is unitary. And uh, expanding uh, expanding um, uh, UU dagger um, in in uh, orders of G um, then uh, the total order is N and then I say that uh, I define the order of u dagger to be r. I have u dagger order r. 
times u to order n minus r. Sum of this is zero because u is independent of g. And so this relation uh, sandwiched between uh, bra j and ket uh, i and inserting in the middle here uh, the complete set of uh, states a which are either in the domain of e or not in the domain of e um, i get the relation that sum over r sum over a in the domain and also not in the domain of um, uh, UR star between, uh, so I have I to the right, but this is complex conjugation, so this moves it to the left. So I, so therefore, um, indices here are now IA, and U on N minus R in between j to the left and a to the right. Um, uh, so plus the same thing uh, for a outside the domain is equal to zero. But, uh, but this thing here was just the definition of r plus minus n i j uh, here. This was the definition. So this, this r plus minus n i j is minus this sum over a different than um, um, uh, the domain of e. And so, um, so in any case, uh, that means that, so th these are all evolution operator um, matrix elements. And uh, these will be uh, then finite. Matrix elements of a unitary operator um, are finite. So in this case also, um, we have um, a finite object. In this case, we don't even need to use the uh, induction step. So that means that we've finally proven the lemma, which was the induction step. Therefore, we have proven the K and N theorem. So now to uh, take stock of what we've actually uh, achieved, we have proved much more generally that infrared divergences in uh, physical quantities obtained in quantum mechanics um, disappear when we sum the transition probabilities of all states, all states of given energy. And then if we particularize that to quantum field theory, uh, that means we can use quantum field theory, despite the fact that um, particular uh, Feynman diagrams are infrared divergence, divergent. All right, so uh, one more um, thing that I want to tell you about, um, about tell you today, is about uh, the relation between factorization uh, and evolution. Um, as, as I've said, uh, factorization is the statement that uh, short distance uh, physics that you can calculate in perturbation the theory is uh, factorizes from incalculable uh, long distance one. Um, and at least, so this this is the statement of factorization in uh, non-abelian gauge theories. Um, 
the statement of evolution, on the other hand, in the momentum transfer Q, also in non-abelian gauge theory, is that uh, physical quantities characterizing long distance be behavior uh, have an evolution, they depend uh, on the momentum transfer, which was due to the emission of soft gluons, which is in fact due to the emission of soft gluons, and therefore it's related to infrared divergence. A factorization um, is a complicated subject and um, people uh, have, uh, have uh, built careers around this. Uh, in particular, the, um, the person I, I, I think most people consider the most um, involved in factorization is George Thurman from Stonybrook, but uh, in any case, uh, factorization always takes the form of a theorem. However, you, it, it cannot be stated generally for all, like we did for the KLN theorem. We cannot do this for you know, any quantum mechanical system or, or something like that. Uh, we have to build, do it case by case. So, um, the specific case that we'll address is the case of hadronic structure functions that we'll be, we'll be calling HAH, or hadron, depending on, you remember, the momentum fraction X and the momentum transfer, I mean, minus momentum transfer squared this capital Q squared. And uh, uh, is defined as follows. We define this hadronic tensor, which is uh, the, um, the matrix element of hadrons coming in. So H hadron of momentum P and uh, some um, uh, spin uh, N, spin sigma. So both in both case, cases, uh, both to the left and to the right. And then, um, then we consider the uh, electromagnetic current, so corresponding to photons, um, and then in the middle uh, we'll consider the uh, sum over uh, states coming out, so any kind of state coming out. Now as you see this is sum of something, and something complex conjugate. So sorry. So here is the electromagnetic current complex conjugate. So this is what will appear in um, in a transition probability, right? Uh, according to what we we just did in the um, KLM theorem. So so this this hadronic tensor is something that appears in uh, in. Um, transition probability. Um, so th that's a physical object. Remember, we, we said that um, um, that we were looking at uh, physical objects. Um, and then times the delta function of um, of the initial states, which you, as you see are P uh, are P um, and Q. Um, I'm sorry, I, I should have... Uh, 
Both written um, No, sorry. Yeah, it is. It is like this. So, so the momentum, um, momentum uh, tensor, uh, the hadronic uh, tensor um, contains this um, as a variable. So I have delta of uh, initial momentum p minus final momentum p n. Uh, but then I also add an extra variable q, and so this hadronic tension now depends on p and q um, and um, but then i can rewrite this so first of all i do the sum over n in the middle and that's just that's a completeness relation so that just gives one so now i have uh, the current um, uh, com uh, dagger times the current at zero um, and then I can rewrite this delta function as the integral um, but this is understood as um, um, so So if I have if I have here um, an x the momentum in in a coordinate space at the electromagnetic function um, and I take the Fourier transfer in momentum space I, I get a delta of uh, q but um, Oh, um, I've written something wrong here. Uh, so H, so momentum P. Well, no, sorry. Yeah, this acting on this uh, assumes to also ob um, also uh, create e to the i p x, and No, it still doesn't work. Um, well, uh, okay, I'm, I'm a little bit... 
confused about this. But um, I'm, I'm a little bit confused about the, this delta function in here, because normally this would be, give just delta of q. All right, um, let me continue. Um, but uh, the point is that this hadronic, uh, hadronic tensor is relevant for deep interacting uh, uh, scattering with uh, where the leptonic part of the amplitude is taken out. So we're just left with the, the electromagnetic uh, current um, acting on the hadrons. That's um, um, that's the hadronic part, um, and uh, by Lorentz invariance, uh, we we can have these following structures. So we can have uh, so this is a mu nu object, um, a symmetric object. So. Sorry, uh, no, it's not symmetric. So it could be either symmetric, and if it's symmetric, it can either be um, this uh, tra traceless part in Q, or this um, this part which is. Um, Um, uh, so, sorry, uh, uh, gauge invariance, excuse me, not uh, traceless, gauge invariance. So if I um, multiply with P mu in here, I get um, zero. And also, um, And then also if I multiply with Q mu, this one, I get zero. I mean, so one will be multiplied with P mu, the other with Q nu. Um, in any case, I'll get, uh, I'll get zero. And then a part uh, that is anti-symmetric, so it's with proportional with epsilon mu nu rho sigma. Q nu, Q nu, P sigma over 2n. Because um, if only this combination is uh, non-zero. If I put two Q, P's or two Q's, here I will get zero. So these are the three possible Lorentz structures that are also gauge invariant. Um, and um, I, ca I call this first first one, I call the structure F1, structure function F1. And F and um, this structure function, I call it uh, the, uh, W2. But then uh, multiplying with P dot Q, I get an F2. And then the factorization theorem. Remember, factorization means you should factorize something calculable uh, of uh, hard momenta and something non-calculable of soft momenta. Uh, so the something non-calculable are these uh, distribution functions for partons in the hadron. Um, and so also, when we're factorizing, you're introducing an arbitrary scale. In this case, the scale is called mu. Before I called it capital Q, but that was just because um, we had not used before the capital Q. Now we've used it uh, to define momentum transfer, so I had to use a different letter. So I used mu squared in here, 
as the factorization scale. And, uh, and the, the, now this, um, the strong coupling constant uh, runs with this factorization scale, mu. Um, and it contains all the infrared behavior, so all the divergence in epsilon. Um, and um, and also acts so mu also acts like a kind of randomization scale in the sense that alpha strong depends on mu squared as well. Um, and then, as usual, I have this integral d psi over psi or d psi here, but uh, the important part is that momentum fraction is divided by psi. So this is the same thing that we had uh, when writing uh, evolution equations. So, <clears throat> so indeed, now if I um, if I write um, if I write the difference, the, the, the value, if I write the difference in the parton distribution function and antiparton, so the, between f and f bar inside the hadron, and if I call that uh, val valence distribution, so let's say the part, uh, the, uh, distribution function for a quark minus anti-quark. Then uh, this one obeys an evolution equation with respect to d, with respect to d log mu. <clears throat> um, which, uh, which is similar to the altarelli parisi equation, the same way that we have integral d xi over xi and from psi to one, and here the, um, uh, some object at defined as x of xi, which is related to the splitting, uh, the quark-quark uh, splitting function. And then the, uh, the same valent part. All right, so you see already that in this case, in this particular case, it was a very complicated uh, matter. The, this uh, um, uh, this factorization, and we also see that it's related to um, um, evolution. Uh, so it's no surprise that. Um, that we had to look for a specific example, but uh, but as I mentioned, both factorization and evolution are general concepts, and it is just that one has to one has to define them uh, case by case. Uh, there is no um, one theorem like in the case of. Uh, uh, existence of infrared divergence, which we've just solved for all cases using the KLM theorem. So for factorization and evolution, we have theorems, but they are uh, case by case. Moreover, I just stated this theorem here. I mean, it was very hard already to state the theorem, let alone to prove it. Um, is a very complicated thing. But I, I, I just wanted to give you uh, a feeling for, for things because these are, um, these are uh, concepts that appear very often and uh, you, ha you have to know what they are. Um, all right, so that's everything I wanted to tell you today. Um, do you have any questions?
No? Can everybody, can anybody check that uh, they can still hear me? Okay, good. So, um, as uh, I'm sure you've heard, the um, government, governor of Sao Paulo decreed that, um, I mean, pulled uh, to this week some, uh, um, some holidays. So Thursday is actually a holiday. Uh, so we, we will not uh, have a class. But uh, I will see you uh, next Tuesday, where we'll start uh, talking about anomalies, uh, another important part of quantum field theory. All right, that's it. See you next Tuesday. Bye.